I hope you had a very good weekend. I hope that you have been refreshed and in some way blessed over the weekend. Uh, I had had a good weekend and enjoyed yesterday the Lord's Day with ministry and meeting folks and just seeing the importance again of real fellowship, getting building relationship and recognizing how hard it is to have fellowship without relationship. In fact, it's well nearly impossible. And so I hope this <clears throat> little session we do each day is in some way a way of establishing relationship or maintaining relationship. I know I don't know everybody that's listening. I know quite a few of you and you've spoken to me and you've shared some of your stories and that's been so encouraging. And I know it's not possible for us to develop this at the moment beyond this, but do you know, it's 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 something rather than nothing. And that to me is the most important and I trust something good. We're continuing on by thinking about the Beatitudes today. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That is our passage or the verse. And if you want to read a little bit more extensively in this, then why not read Matthew 18, 21 to 35, which is the, the parable of the two debtors. And the account there in verse 33, or this, the focus comes to, should you not have had mercy on your fellow as I had mercy on you? In Matthew 25, we read there in verse 34 and 35 and 36 about the mercy of clothing the naked and feeding the hungry. Proverbs 19, 17 says, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord. And verse and Luke 6, 36 says, be merciful even as your father is merciful. Now, if the Beatitudes are a description of the Christian and if there is a progression as we read through from the first to the eighth Beatitude, then the sequence thus far from our understanding, our spiritual poverty goes to our mourning over this, our adopting meekness in heart, and then seeking to become like Jesus, which is hungering and thirsting after righteousness. What character of Christ, what character of our Father, Heavenly Father, is central to everything else? I think mercy certainly is central. And we know that character is much more important than gift. And core character means character like Jesus. What is the core of his character? What is the core of the Father? What does it matter? What is the really important character? I think mercy, or as it is described in the Old Testament, in this chesed is the Hebrew, which is love also. And the word mercy and love, there's a, they're, they're all in and around the same area. And it's not really the great things we do, but the way that we do them, the ordinary small things, so that we can demonstrate this character in the privacy of our homes, the location where we work, in the classroom, in the queue, or even as we comment on the events in life or others' lives or others' flaws as we may see them. Let's ask the question, what is mercy? Contrasted with grace, we get a good definition. Martin Lloyd-Jones says this, Grace deals with us in our sin. Mercy deals with us in our misery. Maybe mercy has to do with the results of sin. Only God can show grace in the truest sense in dealing with our sin as it is in essence. But we can show mercy in dealing with the outcomes of that sin as it affects us and others. And we're affected surely by the sins of others as they are by ours. We look to God for his grace, for forgiveness. But we can offer each other mercy. Mercy will address the horizontal but grace the vertical relationship. No matter how much horizontal mercy there is, uh, the people still have to deal vertically. I mean, we can be merciful to those who in some way offend, but that does not remove their guilt before God. Guilt will remain until grace is sought from God. And for sure, God being merciful and being gracious will do as he has promised, and he will extend that to all who repent. And so God has already acted in mercy in sending Jesus and in justice. His justice has been upheld at the cross and now he can receive us by grace. Let me ask this question then. If I show mercy, what does it mean that I receive mercy? Do I earn it? 
Well, a merciful person declares that they have experienced mercy from God himself. Their merciful disposition is evidence of their having received the mercy of God themselves. This is the whole point of the story of the two debtors that Jesus told in Matthew 18. The expectation was that the one who was forgiven much would show that they had realised and were altered by that mercy, but in fact they show themselves to be totally hardened and even less than merciful, they become cruel. So we don't earn mercy by showing mercy. So what should we be thinking? Is my disposition to be merciful to others, to have a largeness in my soul, to discover within my being a a real reaching out in generosity and kindness? Well, I remember as a young man, sorry, just, I remember a young man just a couple of weeks ago, two Sundays ago, standing before me. There he was at the end of church. He had brought his hold all with him and he began to tell me his story. This was the first time he'd been in a a church like ours. He may have been in another church, but certainly never in one like, like our church, as he said. He was very nervous about coming in, but he thought, when he saw that there was a sign in the front that told him there was a service at 11 o'clock, well, maybe there would be room for him. He had spent the last few nights sleeping out, and one of the pictures that had gone up on the screen in the children's talk was a picture of the winds out on the coast, and he said, that's where I slept last night. He described something of a life of failure, addiction, trouble, hurt, and I could I could find in my heart nothing but compassion, kindness, and mercy towards this young man. Now, I'm sure that there are a lot of people who may have, I don't know, I mean, he didn't tell me, but he said he had hurt people. And I'm sure anyone who's been involved in addictions and other things leaves a trail of of pain behind them. But as I listened to his story, I was drawn towards him in mercy. He asked for nothing, not a thing. He didn't want a meal. He didn't want money. All he wanted was somebody to listen. And he was so glad. And he was very happy to take a Bible. And part of me, I think, went with him when he left that day. So he's been in my prayers. As I said, I'll pray for you every day for a month. And I, well, who knows? We may meet again. We may never meet again. But, you know, this is the sort of spirit, I wouldn't be that. That's not my natural disposition. That's, I think, only a work of grace. You know how often we look at somebody and we want to avoid them because we think, oh, do you know, it'll be trouble, it'll be hassle, it'll be a distraction, it'll, it'll, it'll mean I'll have to go out of my way. Well, is that not the natural inclination of a heart that's been touched by the grace of God. When someone has received such a massive forgiveness as in the debtor's story, is it not normal? Is it not expect an expectation that they should want to be gracious and generous hearted to those around them in their troubles? This is the normal heart of the gracious mercy of God. It's the normal heart that the gracious mercy of God gives to us, I believe. Martin Lloyd-Jones puts it this way again, another little quote. He says, We are all to feel a sense of sorrow for all who are helpless slaves of sin. And you know, it's also a very healing for when we sin and come to God. Remember how we have been met with that grace and then it makes us merciful towards others and makes us act as we should to them. Not to win God's mercy, but because now we appreciate it. And isn't it sort of a healing thing that's going on there in our lives? The giving of mercy, the receiving of mercy, it's such a blessed thing to experience every day. And so I hope today that you will be moved in your heart by mercy. Not to think just mere judgmentally of others, but to look at them through the eyes of the grace of God that is shown to you and shown to me. And then tomorrow we'll develop this whole theme a little because that's what the Beatitudes do. They take us a little further each time and we'll see how it's not just one character but it's the whole lot put together that makes the full character 
and the Lord will bless us.